Hello and welcome back to the Anfield boot room. Um, some time has passed since I was last doing this. And uh, basically what's happened is we've gone through close of season. We've gone through the transfer window. Um, and, I, uh, you know, I thought I had a quiet one. I was given given something in the order of 50 million, which was absolutely lovely. I still have... 40 million uh, at the end of it which i mean you're you're as surprised as i am um there's lots of lovely things happening in the board request area so training facilities youth facilities affiliate clubs have come and come in and gone um i don't think i can really request anything else that's worth requesting apart from more money but i don't need it right now so i'm gonna keep keep my powder dry on that um so yeah back to these transfers and who have we how many have we got in let's have a little i've spent 119 million which seems excessive some of these were stacked up 35 transfers some of these were stacked up before um and how many have we seen leave uh do, 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 do. i'll include there's been a lot of loan activity so that would be 78 so you know and what's that near 120 million spent and then 70 million got back in uh, if we look at some of the players, we've got Malcolm, who we've known about for a while. Um, oh, also got badges and pictures now. Hey, hey. So a more professional looking game. Um, Malcolm scored an overhead kick in one of the preseason matches. And I was like, oh my God, you absolute hero. Um, I'm trying to cha train him on his weak foot because he can only hit it with his left. Anyway, Enesh Unal uh, has gone out on, loads to my, uh, out on loan to my affiliate Leeds because he wouldn't get good first team football. Tiago Ribeiro um, is a regen from Portugal. He's off at Wolves, which is another one of my new affiliates. Um, so basically, I, I find having a couple of teams in the championship pretty useful. Um, also at Charlton, I had two in the championship and one in League One. And then whenever one got promoted and or relegated, I always had a, a, a decent balance of teams to to give useful first team football to my players. And that's that's part of the whole idea um it's part of the whole mantra so again uh Felipe Batista is on at Accrington who I think are they league one yeah so they're at the bottom of league one at the minute unfortunately um but yeah he's off on loan there another a prospect Gazica Tarantino uh was prospect and then I think yeah oh no he's still he still could be good oh but yeah Alfredo Pedraza is another one of those. Tomash, I got him from Real Madrid. He actually might be quite good. He's quite physically able. Um, Gabriel Jesus uh, could potentially be quite good. I've been trying to use him as a super sub, but he's not been very super. But that's fine because he's 18. He will be homegrown and he's top quality. Um, Gerson is another absolutely wonderful player. He's going to be coming in and doing very well. Um, Guido Vidala has gone off to Wolves because I thought he might struggle to get a decent amount of football. Um, Daniel Marshall's come in from Chelsea, their academy, so he'll become a central defensive midfielder because I don't really do right backs. Um, Nicola Ferraroni is quite a solid, he will be a centre back for me, as you well know. Um, Gary Sargent. Uh, six foot seven, 14 on finishing, five on first touch. I found him quite an amusing player. 17 on jumping, nine on heading. Odd. But I think I can I can round out his rough edges and um, hopefully hopefully create quite a good good young English player there, which is, you know, one of the, one of the ultimate aims. So these are all being picked up for not very much money. Um, I'm sure his name's Ala Alagia, but I would like to call him Alagaya after that newsreader guy. So yeah, Walter Alagaya, he's quite good, evidently. Um, and yeah, so you know, there's there's an assortment of these sorts of guys. Mar 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 Marciano Van Van der Veen clearly come through at United, obviously. Um, and oh, he's actually quite good, I believe. Yeah, he might be quite good, tasty. He's 16 years of age. He's already got pretty good physical and technical stats. Happy days. Um, I'm gonna not go through all of these. Leon Goretzka is more exciting. He's very, very well-rounded. Um, I'm thinking his finishing and aerial prowess will be more useful further up the pitch. So that's what I'm training him for. Um, he has very, very high potential. 
and will go go a long long way probably so that's why i've got him in um lucas silver uh, went onto the transfer list at real madrid so basically i snapped him up for not very much money i snapped up 3.1 million the loan that i sent him out on is already gonna bring me back a million um and he's worth uh, 8.5 million so i was kind of one of the players that i wasn't I, I, you know, wasn't hard set on getting, but uh, just more opportunism um, enabled me to to snap him up, and he'll he'll be sold on, I'm sure, because he's on quite a high wage um, for what he is. And I do have other players that I prefer more in that position. However, you know, it was a no brainer, really. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> Jonathan Tarr has come in and gone out on loan to get more first team football. Um, Romagnoli has come in, scored on his debut. Uh, well, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll talk you through that in a bit um, to tell you what's happened so far. Uh, Liali's gone off on loan to Wolves. Konopli has come in and he's playing my Champions League games, but no other games, so he'll get unhappy soon and want to leave for 25 million. Very happy. Got him in on a free. Um, Caleri's come in. He's got extraordinary potential for someone who's 21 years of age. I really, he's a bit susceptible to injuries, but I got him for 3.5 million, which was really great. And he's big games, he's a consistent performer. And I think having him in the team might enable me to get rid of Sturridge or someone like that because he's so good and he's got a lot of potential. Um, yeah, but he's you know plenty good already. Uh, Jesse is um, basically another one went on the transfer list at Real Madrid. I bought him for 3.1 million. He's already worth 7.7 million. He has the potential to be worth more. However, um, I thought I'd do the same as Lucas Silva and sack him off on loan to some European club. And no one's buying. So I've essentially been left holding the baby of uh, 56 grand a week. Uh, he's, obviously, he's technically good. He's very, you know, He's a well-rounded attacking player. But he's already getting a bit grumpy. Because he is a confrontational, volatile kind of lad. Because um, I, yeah, I left him out of the Champions, Champions Cup squad. Um, yeah, so that's where my, my interesting tactics have perhaps gone slightly wrong. Um, but, you know, I've, I don't mind selling him for 15 million in January. That's still all good. Um, Daniele Rugani uh, is a centre back. He's twenty one again, twenty one years of age, but has a ton of potential, absolute ton. Um, and I wasn't going to sign him, but he's one of those who, you know, he's six foot two. He's young. I mean, he's got six foot two, about a foot of that his neck by the look of it. But he's just really, really well rounded, really, really solid. Can play in the Premier League already, and um, yeah, you've. You rarely get him off Juventus. You know, I tried to get him before for Charlton and never, never managed to do it. So I'm, I'm quite pleased now that we've got him in, and he's a, a good defensive asset. Um, similarly, Rightly Bazoa, which is such a, such an absurd name. Um, he again, I, th- I don't know where these amazingly high potentials are coming from. They're not a player that I would usually consider, but they just the scouts were pretty pretty solid and he had a minimum fee release clause of nine million which i was you know uh having scouted him very very extensively i was fairly happy to get hold of him um he's very well rounded and he's a defensive midfielder by trade but i reckon he can be a good center back for me uh very solid physically and again it's like um if you remember from a video i was saying about kennedy uh he's you know on stats that matter he he doesn't go less than 11 and he's only like 18 19 years of age so that's only going to improve massively um and this guy's the same. So, you know, he just doesn't have weak spots, really, which is great. Um, how about Casquette uh, or Casquette or something? Um, yeah, I'm a bit annoyed, really, because so I, I started proceedings to buy him when he was 17. And that was when the scouts were telling me he had loads of potential. And then uh, kind of got him signed up. He was waiting for a work permit, blah, blah, blah. Um, and by that point, he turned 18, and then as soon, he turned 18, and I signed him, and then suddenly his, the bottom falls out of his potential. And so it's just another one of those kind of fairly stereotypical ones. I'm just going to take a drink. Uh, 
one of those unfortunate cases where you think you've got a really great wonder kid um and yeah you know he's a really great 17 year old but for an 18 year old he's not that good but i thought you know his stats look pretty good he's really fast really technically good look at those technical stats for a 17 18 year old mad uh, mentally he will come along um but yeah it's just kind of pushing out on that speed technical and vision stats i thought it'd be interesting if he can get a whole season in at wolves he'll of course improve um and then maybe sell him on ah Kranovita. um I just couldn't resist. He's so solid and he can get even better. Um, and for, for 7.5 million, that a lot of that is spread over the next however many years. I think it cost me about 3 million up front. He's just so solid. I thought I might loan him out as well, but again, no takers because I think I signed him so late in the um, in the transfer window, which is fair enough. He barely got settled at this club before he heads off on loan to the next one. Um but yeah, he'll be an asset. He'll be an asset to play, or he'll be an asset to sell on. I don't, um, you know, I'm not. I'm not going to be particularly precious uh, about playing him or not playing him because I don't want him to impede the development of some of my younger guys. But he's absolutely solid, and he was cheaper chips. Um, also got in Ante Koric, uh, who's 18, basically the next Luka Modric. Um, I don't know if that's official or not. No, he's the new Zoranomir Boban. Um, or yeah. Boban, whatever. Um, already only money back on that. He's he's uh, the, the the reason I signed him is his potential was just holding and holding and holding out. The more I was scouting him, the more I was learning about him. Um, yeah, so I was just like, yeah, I can't not have him. He's off on loan at Cardiff uh, to try and get some. Actually, I've just thought if he's going on loan at Cardiff, is he going to get? Yeah, okay, he'll get Great Britain. Will he be trained officially in Wales or England? Hmm, that's a slight worry. Because obviously I want him to be trained in nation. Because uh, he's not going to be homegrown. I pushed him out on loan because he can't compete with the players I currently have in that slot. But then obviously I loan him nationally because I want him to be loaned in nation. Hmm, anyway, um, it wouldn't be the first time I buggered up one of those things. So yeah, in terms of outgoings, we had some some you know some dead wood to get rid of. Obviously, a lot of the kind of under twenty ones and that sort of thing whose contracts were running out, just just get rid of them. Um, Quates went for three point seven million. Dejan Lovren twenty three million. Carlos Fernandez, our kind of stuttering failure of last season, has gone on to be a stuttering stuttering failure at Cardiff. Oh, that's another one. Bollocks! I need to stop loaning players to Welsh clubs until I find out. Hmm. I'll check. I'll check, but not on this video. It's fine. Uh, Skirtle, Roma came in. Real Madrid were interested. Roma came in with a good bid, and he had a year left in his contract. And he, I mean, he was my rock, but he's 30 years of age. And, you know, £18 million pounds for a 30 year old centre back with one year left on his contract when I've just signed a load of really, really young, great centre backs. I was like, faith in youth. So there we go. Tony has gone out on loan to Burnley. He's doing well because he's a great player. Um, he'll continue to develop. Rishi the Ziv um, has gone out on loan to West Brom. Is that in the Premier League or in the Championship? In the Championship. As you can see, I'm making a ton of money there. He's doing hella good. So he's going to improve even more. And he will actually still be homegrown by the time he comes back, which is great. Um, Iago Aspas, decent player, had a 7.5 million. Uh, release fee, which I was more than happy for QPR to trigger. Retari has gone out on loan. Markovic has gone out on loan. All of these are earning money. Um, Lucas Silva, of course, they they were really upset with me that Gerard left. I was like, it was already arranged, and I could, interestingly, well, not that interesting, but you know, I could sign him back fairly easily at like you know about a third of his of his wage he was on at the time, which is quite funny. Um, I'm not going to because that kind of runs contrary to the whole point. Uh, yeah, Tiago ilori has gone out. Um, Condogbia has gone out. Uh, he's not earning me money, but he's getting better and better. So that's all good. origi has gone out. Christopher Ayer. Moroccan Bill. Luis Alberto. Yeah, I couldn't get a decent price for him. So he's on a nice long contract. So I thought I'd just uh, load him out and he'll probably get more when he comes back. You know, I'm not, I'm not fussed about it. Ruben Neves. He's gone out on loan and he's already improved so massively. And he will be homegrown when he comes back. I'm very, very pleased um, that he's going to get a whole, a whole kind of season of experience over at Stuttgart. Um, 
as I mentioned, Tar's gone out. Silver. Um, yeah, I think that's at in the Premier League. So he's getting some Premier League experience, which will be nice. Uh, and there's Uno and Antikoric, I've already mentioned. Um, so yeah, that's how it looks. I've tried to, by loaning all of these players out, strip the squad back a little bit. Um, so yeah, I've still got Horn and Koval. Um, yeah, you can kind of see a reasonable... Oh, that's not the best way of showing them, but... Um, most of these aren't defenders, in fact, but yeah, the defensive lineup is about you know the these kind of people. Um, so Eder, Rugani, Mamana, Bazoa, uh, Andre Wisdom comes in as cl uh, trained in club, so that's just to help the Champions League squad. Uh, again, he's on loan for you know uh, he's uh, on contract for quite a long time, so that's good. And so yeah, I've got a reasonable, not too large. I've loaned out where I can so I make sure that I don't stutter these guys' development. Like, I've only got, of the people who actually be playing striker, you've, I think I've got eight. Um, I just changed that by accident, didn't I? Um, so, yeah, of the people who actually be playing, yeah, yeah, you've got those those guys. So it's it's interesting. So what's happened so far? We had a bit of a mixed pre-season. I was obviously just trying to get everyone fit. That's all I was trying to do. Um we won the first game 4-0 against Leicester. If you can see those, the minutes of those goals, five minutes, six minutes, and six minutes. First three shots, three shots on target, three goals. It was absolutely disgraceful from Leicester's standpoint. It might actually be funny to to watch those goals because um, they were just the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Um, especially the last one was just catastrophic. So, yeah. Um, that's the reason why I'm just Balotelli being Balotelli. It's all good, it's all good. Uh, is this just going to skip on to the next? Uh, I will just, I'll just show you the last one because that was brilliant. Straight from kickoff. Yep, have that. Amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, so Leicester, yeah, pretty much collapsed. Um, then I had, uh, oh God, I played a reserve team as a reserve as I could in my Champions League squad against uh, Victoria Pilsen, Pilsen, who knows. Um, they had a couple of penalties at the end of the game, some of which were controversial. So I was like, hmm, Koval did himself no favours. Oh, dear, what a mess, what a mess. I then beat Man United, um, <laughs> beat Man United 3-2, absolutely sensational. Balotelli was brilliant. I had a go at them in the at half time and it really seemed to work. Romagnoli came on uh, because someone was a bit tired. Uh, someone at the back was a bit tired and he scored from a corner and it was an absolute genius move. Um, I then kind of beat uh, Victoria Pilsen a bit more comfortably, uh, then drew against West Ham. Um, I was comfortable. I was dominating the game, dominating the game. And then they, they had just a period where they scored two goals in quick succession. And it was like, sorry, what? And they, they had bad, they're basically no chances. Oh, very frustrating. And so, yeah, I was throwing throwing the kitchen sink at it um, towards the end. But, yeah, whatever. Hit the woodwork twice. Standard, standard stuff there from Liverpool. Um, and this brings me on to Burnley. So I've set up with a reserve team because I've been drawn in the most ridiculous Champions League group of all time. Um, so I was a second seed. So Real Madrid, obviously, top seed. I got Roma, probably the strongest of the third seed sides, and then Monaco, probably the strongest of the fourth seed sides. So um, overall, as a complete nightmare. Like, look at other groups. Like, I could have been Dortmund, Copenhagen, and Dynamo. Like, you know, Benfica, Valencia, and Salzburg. Like, no, it would have been Benfica, Moscow, and Salzburg. It's like that could have been my group, but no, I've got Madrid, Roma, and Monaco. Oh, so yeah, I'm playing them in like three days time and then going on to play Arsenal, then going on to play Millwall, then going on to play Chelsea, then going on to play Real Madrid. <sighs> so this is why the squad happens. Um, so yeah, I've set up this game. Um, yeah, I do have quite a lot of players with numbers, in fact, because I like them all. Right, there you go. Done. Decisions of drop Raheem Sterling, Shachabam. Um Yes, so who is that? Iguayuche. Oh, Ike. Ike Chakuruche. 
Okay, I don't know who he is. Um, let's let's go in hard on them, lads, because they won't like it. They don't like it up them. Um, Adam Johnson getting jail. Jordan Much and Dean Marnie. Good lord, Dean Marnie is he still hanging about in the Premier League? Very strange, very strange. Ben Mee. Oh, let's close down Kieran Tripp here because he's actually all right. Uh, ben Mee at left back. I can't imagine him having much of an attacking input on the game. Um, oh, look, Quates is on the bench. So let's go in hard on him if he comes on. And then also Ashley Barnes. The likes of Patrick Bamford was a prospect in 2015, if you remember that far back. So he's on the bench. Scott Arfield, recent acquisition at Rangers, in fact. Uh, we'll probably try and come on and do something good. And uh, David Jones. Anyone remember David Jones? Man United reject. I don't know who this man is. Let's just leave him alone. Um, right. So. I did say for the fans against Man United because it's a very specific derby. And it actually worked for the first time, I think, in my managerial career. So I might try that again. No. See, just nothing. Just absolutely nothing. Which is what I expected. Um, the first time I did it. So yeah, this this is a very very much a backup lineup, um, but it shall be interesting to see what happens. I'm hoping obviously that I can win or at least draw. So you know, oh, well done, Kranovitas. Made a foul in the first minute of his first game. Clever lad. Um, oh, well done, Horn. So yeah, Burnley having some of the some of the play of it. Hmm. I do sometimes struggle against these kind of flat midfields um, for some reason. I don't know why. It feels like I should. Oh, oh, unlucky. I should be finding the gaps between, but yeah, two layers of floor. And then suddenly they're kind of, their strikers pop up in elusive places to evade my three men at the back somehow. Um, and it can be quite frustrating. But yeah, you've got, you've got, you know, an array of wonder kids. Oh, go on, Bayano. Go on. He's just, he really consistently gets the ball on target. I like that about him. Sometimes his finishing isn't so explosive, but it's like he's placing it. Oh, Kennedy. Yes, Kennedy. Yes. Or Kennedy, as they would actually say in Brazil. Yeah, he's, he's developing well. He's developing nicely. Like him a lot. So Lozano there using his good crossing. Kennedy pokes against the bar and then just smashes it in. Good lad. First 10 minutes, 1-0 up. That's a result. <laughs> one woodwork and one clear-cut chance. That's what we're all about. And these, these players that maybe weren't so good last last season, like Lozano, I'm kind of hoping... Okay, Kennedy, come on, get a hold of yourself, man. Um, Lozano, you know, his stats have certainly come on, so I'm hoping his performances are going to match that that progress, essentially. Ooh, Carlos Baiano. Nearly, mate, nearly. Um... So yeah, yeah. The, the average age of this squad is probably about 20. I think the oldest player on the pitch playing for Liverpool is maybe 22 years of age. Oh, Carlos Baiano just sneaks it in. It's just, it's just so sneaky. They say he's actually quite good at playing with a withdrawn striker role, but I just find him so effective as the advanced forward doing that kind of poaching and just getting on the end of things and smacking him in. I am. He's got a good weak foot, but I am and working extensively on his weak foot. Um, as well just to make it as good as possible because i know on this game those two-footed strikers just literally you can just stand them in the box and just ping the ball at them oh good lord what a finish that's absolutely outrageous oh dear carlos Bayano. now i've got your photo you look a, a, a bit dumb but these finishes are it doesn't even have any space there the man is literally inside him in the <laughs> And he still manages to... Is he dabbing? Oh, please God, no. Um, but yeah, with his with his left foot from the outside of the box, hit it against the post and in. It's absolutely sensational. Well, I am I did... I put some, some of the better players on the bench and then also some of the younger players just in case something like this happened. We're, do, we're doing similar to what we did against Leicester, really. Um, just blowing them out, blowing them away, blowing them out of the water, which is great. Um cast by Arno. every time he gets the ball now i think he's gonna he's gonna score um but yeah kennedy come on whip a better ball in than that or just let it go out for a throw because yeah who who likes to cross it in again to a packed penalty box no one no one 
obviously. Um, amazing so far. Amazing. Well done. I'm going to tell you to not uh, not let up. So I'm just trying to think who's in my Champions League squad. I'll tell you what, I'll bring on Jesus for Bayano. Um, who else? I'll probably bring on Mighty Mouse in a bit and uh, Maximilian Mayer. I might, I might nickname him M&M's, but I'm... I'm not convinced by that. That might not be a good. Might be start starting to slightly abuse the uh, power of nicknames. Um, but yeah, I know Mighty Mouse have to come on because Pitbull's a bit tired. Um, right. I'm hoping. Oh, it looks like Burnley have bought on Ashley Barnes. Adam Johnson get in prison. Um, oh. Good. Okay. I was just going to say, I hope bringing on them bringing on Ashley Barnes doesn't give them a, a foothold in the game because he's quite big and strong and stuff. You know how he be. Um, Kranovita, well done. Um, George Boyd, yep. Go back to running class. Okay. 60 minutes, 15 minutes into the game. Let's take off Lucas Pitbull because he's knackered. Um, keep Mighty Mouse as the deep line playmaker just because we're 3 0 up. And if he doesn't play make very well, it won't matter. Um, oh, good save. And yeah, okay. That wasn't very good. I love how none of my players reacted. Let's just, let's just see this this brilliant reaction there from all of these guys. Literally, like, there's one other guy. Who's that? Lozano. Lozano is the one other person who realized that that might happen. What an up. Um, all right, 70 minutes. Let's chat, put some more people on the pitch. Let's take off Goretzka because he's tired. Let's put on M&Ms and uh, let's see how he does because he didn't do very well last season and uh, his stats as a result actually haven't really developed. So it will be, oh, come on, have him, have it. No, okay, fair enough, whatever. Um, be good to see if M&Ms is going to, truck on or not because he's one of my great gets tackled first thing that's not good um yeah you're kind of ballsing it up guys i'm not gonna lie uh anyway it doesn't matter that's still well, we've got about three seconds yeah three one win good stuff disappointed to have conceded carlos Bayano obviously takes a lot of the credits i'm just gonna say well done because i was Good. And then I started pissing about with the lineup, and that's why they started getting worse. <laughs> uh, Gabriel Jesus again, not doing that well, but still getting game time in big games. So we're top of the table. Also, forgot to mention that, not particularly relevant after four games, because I'm sure we will go on an incredibly crappy run due to our ridiculous group of death. Um, Kranovita makes Liverpool debut. Uh, 7.5 million. How much is he worth already? It's got to be 16, 16.25 million. He's like, he's a great player. Great, great player. And he's on 16 grand a week, which makes me happy. Um, yep. Done. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Carlos Bayano. I wouldn't want him to be. Carlos Bayano is a consummate professional. Uh, yeah. Kranovic had a solid game. That was fine from him. Uh, yeah. Bayano was amazing. Kennedy's amazing. Bayano's amazing. Right. That was an easy press conference. Neves is amazing. So yeah, basically I'm building up a bit of a, a squad, a proper squad of players. And you know, a kind of all of these, these loan arrangements that I have coming in are flexible. Um, so for instance, if in January I'm struggling for um, an attacking midfielder or a defensive midfielder or a striker, I can just call one of these guys back in and give them the first team football that they, they're basically not able to get elsewhere. And there's a lot, there's a lot of talent out on loan. And that's, that's why I like, because obviously then they either develop or they don't perform and I can then give them contracts and first team football at Charlton or not accordingly. Um, See, I don't really know how long this one's been going on, to be honest. I wasn't really paying attention. But that was quite a, a quick game. Good win. Um, solid stuff from everyone concerned. And I guess, yeah, we'll just call it call it a day there and uh, watch the World Cup some more. Whoop, whoop. All right, bye, guys.